Good morning. Today is Thursday the 10th of June and it's a feria in the 10th week of the Church's ordinary year. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Continue in the readings from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And this is 3.15 to 4.1. Even today, when Moses is read, the veil is over their minds. It will not be removed until they turn to the Lord. Now this Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, with our unveiled faces, reflecting the mirrors, the brightness, reflecting like mirrors, the brightness of the Lord, all grow brighter and brighter as we are turned into the image that we reflect. This is the work of the Lord, who is Spirit. Since we have, by an act of mercy, been entrusted with this work of administration, there is no weakening on our part. If our gospel does not penetrate the veil, then the veil is on those who are not on the way to salvation, the unbelievers whose minds the gods of this world has blinded, to stop them seeing the light shed by the good news of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For it is not ourselves that we are preaching, but Christ Jesus as the Lord, and ourselves as your servant for Jesus' sake. It is the same God that said, let there be light shining out of darkness who has shone in our minds to radiate the light of the knowledge of God's glory, the glory on the face of Christ. The word of the Lord. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> Chapter 5. We continue in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said to his disciples, if your virtue goes no deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. You have learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not kill, and if anyone does kill, he must answer for it before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. If a man calls his brother fool, he will answer for it before the Sanhedrin. And if a man calls him renegade, he will answer for it in hell fire. So then, if you are bringing your offering to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar, go and be reconciled with your brother first, and then come back and present your offering. Come to terms with your opponent in good times, while you are still on the way to the court with him, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge, the officer, and you will be thrown into prison. I tell you solemnly, you will not get out till you have paid the last penny. Gospel of the Lord. First reading is very much taken up with Paul's understanding and application of the difference between the two covenants. And in the first covenant, as I said in a previous reflection, Moses came down from the mountain with his face bright, with bright shiny light and the people couldn't look at him and they had to look through veils or look down. But Paul goes on and says that light faded and the true light is the light that comes from Christ. So that, and he's referring now to the Jews, it's as if they're all wearing veils and can't see the true light of Christ. But if they have faith, they will, their veil will be removed, the Spirit will come upon them, and they will see the light of Christ. But if, because of their hardness of heart or the teaching of this world, they hold on to the veil and refuse to let it be lifted, they don't see Christ. And so Paul is saying our job is to preach Christ and trust that somehow the veil will be lifted on our hearers and that their ears will be opened and hear the word and that their eyes will be opened, their minds will be opened and receive the light that comes from the face of Christ. 
Paul's confidence in the work of the Spirit and that Paul says that's the heart of his work. He's not preaching himself. He's preaching the Word of God, the Spirit of God and he knows it's being received when people in a sense let the veil fall away from their face and accept his word. But those who don't accept it he knows are the people holding on to the veil and on to the Old Testament view. The Gospel again is contrasting the Old Testament and the New Testament this time over the question of murder and anger. Old Testament said you mustn't kill. Jesus says in your heart you mustn't even allow anger to grow. You must put the anger in your heart aside and try and come to feelings of love and care and concern for your brother. And it's very definite that if your brother's got something against you, that you've done something that, to hurt your brother and you need to put it right, don't come to church. Leave your gift before the altar, as the saying goes. Go and be put right with your brother or your sister and then come back because you've put yourself right with God. And this is all linked up with the two commandments, love God and love your neighbour. And that you can't pretend that your love of God is true if you're at loggerheads with your neighbour. You have to be put right with your neighbour neighbor, to be put right with God. The two go hand in hand. But of course, our prayer to God, our openness to hearing teaching of Christ and our prayer for the grace that we receive through the sacrament through prayer turns our hearts and helps us to love our brothers and sisters and so create the world of peace. And of course that's the heart of the, the Mass when, when we could, we can't do it now, but the sign of peace we would shake our, the hand of our brother or sister and say peace be with you, symbolically putting ourselves right with our brother or sister. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, hear us. Blessed be our God and Father, he hears the prayers of his children. Lord, hear us. We thank you, Father, for sending us your Son. Let us keep him before our eyes throughout this day. Lord, hear us. Make wisdom our guide. Help us to walk in newness of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, give us your strength in our weakness. When we meet problems, give us courage to face them. Lord, hear us. Direct our thoughts, our words, our actions today, so that we may know and do your will. Lord, hear us. And you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord God, true light and creator of light, grant that faithfully pondering on all that is holy we may ever live in the splendour of your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.